Sabbath, happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. It's good to see everybody on uh, this Sabbath morning. I know we're full. Don't get sleepy, guys. We had a you know a pretty hefty meal, hefty meal uh, this morning. It was good. The jerk chicken was awesome. Thanks to Jonathan. Uh, it was good. Good. Uh, uh, hate that he's leaving us, but you know uh, uh, we pray that, that he has a safe return home and we enjoy. We thank God for uh, the months that we had to spend with him. It's been a joy. He's done a lot. As, uh, as Marcus said, he's done a lot since he's been here. And so uh, he's very important to this ministry. Uh, him and his mom pushed me when I didn't want to be pushed. And sometimes when I don't want to be pushed, <laughs> it can be quite difficult. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the whole uh, the production of the videos and everything like that he's responsible for the equipment he paid for uh he, he financed the whole thing and uh and uh he said it was his gift that's something that he made a commitment with the most high that he wanted to do and so he achieved what he wanted to achieve we really appreciate him and we thank god for him and uh you know uh my kids love their parents and I say parents, they love their parents. They will do anything for them and they'll defend them to the grave. And I appreciate my family. I appreciate my son and daughter. Both of them have been instrumental to helping me in the ministry. And I think that that's really, really good because most of the time, you know, you may have the, the minister or the minister and his wife working alone, but when you got the whole family working together, it's just that's, that's taking it to another level. And so uh, we really appreciate it. Um, on another note, and this is going to lead us into our topic. Uh, first, the disclosure is the message that I put together is for me. Uh, and so I'm just sharing uh, a message that was put together for me with you guys. And so the message is not pointed towards anybody in here but me. It was encouragement. And um, so this morning uh, I was thinking about because, uh, you know, my family uh that we are like uh we are like overboard with uh these animations of uh uh of moses and uh the joseph story and and then we watch it like it's nothing but it's not about the animation it's about the story that's involved with it and so uh in thinking on this uh animation of joseph um it's like it's like i was given a message and uh, and I'm looking at this, and I had already wrote this lesson, but in all the harsh treatment that Joseph went through, he never murmured. It's just unusual, man. I I'm just being honest. It, it just and it hit me right in the face that his brothers did him wrong, uh, uh, sold him into slavery. You know, uh, Potiphar's wife lied on him. Uh, he went to prison. Uh, no matter what happened, I never heard him murmuring. And in this animation, the prison supervisor came to him and said, man, are you still believing in your God? And you're still praying to your God, even though you're going through all this, you behind bars. And you're still, you know what I'm saying, praying to your God. And uh, he was like, you know, he was telling him, this is my God. I can't give up on him. He's going to be he's promised that he's going to be with me. And uh, that's unusual because can I say that I have exemplified that type of response to God in my trials and tribulations? I can't say, you know. And um, another thing is uh, I want to address a lot of people don't really understand, fully understand is uh, uh, the murmuring thing that God really doesn't like it because it's showing God. It showed God that I was impatient. I was very impatient. You know, and it's almost like sometimes we have pain and instead of just saying, well, let me drink some water and lie down and see if the pain go away. The first thing we want to do is go drive, gra grab Motrin because we want a relief. That's me. That's Jonathan. Want a relief from the pain. When most of the time, if you just lay down, maybe put a cool towel on your forehead or drink some water or something like that, the pain dissipates. It goes away. But in my life, it was always when pain got close to me. You know, I uh, I had a response to it. And so, uh, you know, I was thinking of myself earlier this this week and I started writing a lesson and I was thinking of my wife, Dewanda, 
uh, when I wrote this lesson. And so I wrote it for us to share with you guys. And the reason I said the Wanda and me is because I wanted people to know it was about us. And it was about the pain that we feel and we go through. And sometimes we say ouch a little bit too much. Right. We're saying ouch a little bit too much. And, uh, uh, you know, yes, I know there's in the body, it's a difference between crying out to God and murmuring. Mm. You know, you can cry out to God, but then there's uh, that cry can turn into uh, when you deal with problematic situations, murmuring. And we're going to explain to you what murmuring is so you can understand it. And, uh, and so it can un encourage us. And so uh, uh, David wrote plenty of uh, psalms about things he was going through. And we read them to this day. And it encourages us because it gives us a chance to look at ourselves. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, I just want you guys to, to share in this lesson with us. Because one thing I don't shy away from is I got to overcome just like everybody else in here got to overcome. You know, uh, uh, I got to be found without spot or wrinkle. See, sometimes you can get in, 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 in certain roles in the church and you feel like you're already without spot or wrinkle. And so and I got to be without spot or wrinkle just like everybody else has to be without spot or wrinkle. That keeps me humble. Um, um, one of the main things of God choosing a priest, and I quote it all the time, is he took priests from among men seeing that they were compassed around with what? Infirmity. So knowing that you still exist in this world and you, there's still a potential chance of a situation happening to you, it can give you compassion in dealing with other things that other people face. And so uh, this is going to be a good lesson. So our first uh, scripture is going to be found in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Not really a long lesson, but it may make you think. And then if and so, you know, if you guys see me in a thing, if I'm in conversation and it's, you feel like that I'm murmuring too much. It's time for encouragement. It's not time for brow beating or, you know, told you so, but it's time for encouragement that, hey, we can get through it. You got to put it in the hands of God and let God take care of it. Huh? Yes, yes, yes. Because she's worse than I am, actually. She's 10 times worse than I am, you know. She's still, she's 10 times worse than I am. And, uh, you know, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes I, I sometimes I go to Sister Dewanda and I'll be like telling her and, and she be oh man, she puts the whip on me. See you, blah blah. You know, she just goes into it. You know what I'm saying? But that's okay because we gotta get through here. We gotta be encouragement. And say Christine, I really love the response you give on the text and on the gospel guide. I mean, it just, you know, when you see in those those animated pictures of hallelujah and glory and everything like that. It's almost like I can see you. I can yeah. see your emotion. Uh, and, 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 and that stuff is needed. And so I really, really appreciate it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just want to tell you that first Corinthians chapter 10, one through 11, uh, uh, uh we're going to be there a while. And then we're going to go to other places based off of that. Uh, this is going to be a good encouraging lesson. And I can learn from Marcus. Marcus probably, uh, uh, does it in his mind because we never hear him do it. You know, Mark is going to say too much. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, he probably complain in his private closet or at home, you know what I'm saying? But we don't hear <laughs> He just get real quiet, you know, and so we can all learn from him. But 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1, more of a brother, and I would not that ye should be ignorant. And when you see that word, we always use it so negatively, but it just means unknowing. Do not recognize you're unaware, you're uninformed. So a lot of times we use that word, uh, but it, it's not a word to be afraid of. It's just that you're not knowledgeable about something. How that all of our fathers was under the clouds and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Now I want to stop there and I want to bring to notice that everybody there had to go through what everybody was going through. They all had to go through the same thing. You know what I'm saying? They all got delivered from Egypt and they all saw dry ground, desert, no water reserves, no nothing. And so we miss that when we read this, that, that they all were under this cloud. They all passed through. So if, if we're in a, in a horrible, or we got to overcome in this salvation process. 
So we're all going to be touched with stuff. You know, so we're all going to be dealing with each other. That's why it's so good to come together with like minds, not averse minds. When you have like minds, you can consider that we're all trying to overcome the adversary and how he's using everything around us to get us off base. He uses people. He uses building. He uses movies. He uses anything that he can do to get us off base. But since we're all in this wilderness, we're all in this wilderness. We're all going through. We can all be what? Encouragement to each other because the same process. Remember, the scripture says the same situations is happening in your brothers. Because in the type, this is a wilderness, so we're all under that same situation. Hallelujah. And uh, and so the children of Israel was guided by God, and uh, 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 his presence was there. So let's go and let's let's look at some scriptures that talks about that. The first one is in Exodus 13, 21. Exodus 13 and 21. Amen. Amen. This is going to be a good lesson. It says, and the Lord went before them by day in the pillar of a cloud and led them by the way and by the night in the pillar of fire to give them light and uh, to go by day and night. Now, what I pulled out of this, saints, is this. There was a cloud there mm -hmm. and the Lord was with them. But they were oblivious to have enough faith to believe that God presence was in that cloud a lot of times we're in life and we don't know that god is with us and he's showing us things and showing us signs that look i'm with you do not fear but are we like the children of israel to where we can't recognize that god is what with us a problematic situation can be 10 times worse but we don't even realize what that god is with us so here it is read that now with that in mind and the Lord went before them in by day in what? A pillar of a cloud. So here it is, it's a natural resource <laughs> that, that, was, that was leading them, but they didn't even recognize that that was God. So when now when you look at the scripture that talk about Moses struck the rock, he said that rock was me. He was a representation in that rock. That's why you got to believe that he exists in you. When you don't believe he exists in you, you will act any kind of way. But he has the power to actually exist in this human body. Amen. That is wonderful. So when now when you look at that, it just gives you different insight. Numbers 9 and 15. Numbers 9 and 15. Numbers 9 and 15 through 23. And on the day that the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered it. Sometimes we don't even realize that God's presence yeah. is with us and we are yeah. fearing. Yeah. Oh, I got to go and I got to face this situation. Yeah. Oh, man, I feel alone because why? All I see is the doctor's office. All I see is the doctor. All I see is furniture. All I see is pictures. All I see is this mean receptionist. But you can't even tell that God is with you. Why? Because he's existing in your body and God's spirit connect with your spirit. And so you're not alone. He told you, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But because we're looking with our physical eyes, we tend to forget that uh, they looked at a cloud as if it was just a cloud. But this, but let's read. This is good. This is good. It says, and on the day that the tabernacle was reeled up by the cloud, uh, the cloud covered the tabernacle, namely the tent of testimony. And at evening, there was upon the tabernacle as it were the appearance of fire into the morning. So it was always, and it says, and the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. And when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, then after the children of Israel journey and in the place where the cloud aboard, abode, the uh, children of Israel pitched their tent. And at the command of the Lord, the children of Israel journey and at the command of the Lord, they pitched as long as the cloud abode upon the tabernacle, they rested in their tent. And when the, and then when the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle, many days, then the children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and journey night. So here it is that he presented himself in a cloud and in fire. 
natural resources. That's why when you read Romans chapter one, it says the visible things of creation are clearly understood by the, uh, you know, the visible things of, he, of the Godhead is clearly understood by the things that are made. To be able to see and understand that God made these resources, he still has control over them. And he can use them in a way that he wants to use them. And let's go to Jeremiah 31 and 31. I want to read that. Jeremiah 31, 31. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31, 32. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. With my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws in their inner report and I will write them in their hearts and I will be their God and they will be my people. Now, the reason I chose this is because think about it. He said I was a father and I took them by the hand. Mm -hmm. Well, there was no human walking with them, holding their hand. There was a cloud by day to show that what his presence was with him. Mm -hmm. So just us having the ability to get up and still see the sun shine and based off of his decree. Seeing the clouds form and move just off of his decree, the, the cycle of the rain, the cycle of the seasons, that should know that God is what still with you. He's still with you. And so they went through the Red Sea, which was a type of washing from the, a land full of idol worship and abominations, and to the Moses, the leader and deliverer in the cloud, which was the word according to John. Because first, I mean, John, the first chapter said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And he was the savior to Israel from bondage, just as we are washed or baptized and covered in that precious blood of the Messiah. Now, you see the type. Paul is bringing this up. He's showing you how the type was back here. And it's a type of what we're going through right now that we are being led by God. Now, verse three, we're back in first Corinthians chapter 10. This is going to get good. Chapter 10, it says, and all did eat the same spiritual uh, meat. And that's wonderful because if you think about it, from the biggest to the greatest to the smallest, all of them had to wait on God to give them what? Manna from heaven. So no matter if there's a bishop or no matter if there's a deacon, no matter if there's a saint or no matter if there's a child, if you're in a salvation process, we all got to wait on God to respond to us, to feed us. Because we're all in this what? In this wilderness. We're dependent on him, meaning we're all in the same shape. We're all in the same boat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink for the drink that they for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Let's go to Romans 6, 3 through 4. We're setting up. This is going to get good. Romans 6. Three through 4. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus, were baptized into his death, Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism of death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. So the children of Israel, after they came through that miraculous Red Sea, they were supposed to go into wilderness and change their behavior and start walking in a different way so they can live according to God's governmental rules in the land of Canaan, which he did what? Promise to what? Abraham. And so we're supposed to be doing the same thing. So we're all in the same boat because why? God is speed, spoon feeding all of us. We're in the salvation process. We're connected to him and we're all trying to get what salvation. It's a process. So all the Israelites share the spiritual food called manna that God provided from heaven. And that's Exodus 16 and drank from the rock of water, that spiritual rock, Exodus 17 and 6. And they all tasted of that heavenly gift. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Hebrews 6 and 4. Mm -hmm. They all tasted that heavenly gift, right? Mm -hmm. Hebrews 6 and 4. Mm 
For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost in verse 5 and have what? Have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come if they should fall to renew them again to repent the sin that they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and putting to them open shame. Now why am I reading that? Because they all tasted the manna. They depended on God. You understand what I'm saying? They depended on God and they tasted he was wonderful. He was powerful. And this promise about the land of Canaan was true. But yet it's still something happened. There was a buffer that came. Something that happened that kept them from going into the promised land. Just like them, we have been enlightened and we've been we tasted the Holy Spirit because none of us will be sitting here with our lives like it is if we didn't receive the Holy Spirit. None of us would be sitting here. None of would we be obeying the Sabbath? Would we be obeying the feast days? Sure, we can go and work on the Sabbath. They pay extra money for working on a Saturday. Look at how many years we could have made over time. You know how many jobs that I didn't do? I didn't take because of the Sabbath. Just think of all the things we could have been doing, but we're all dealing with the same situation. That we're trying to overcome because we believe that he promised us the land of Canaan, the land of rest. Now, let's get back into it. This is going to be good. I'm leading us somewhere. The rock that followed was the Messiah who provided them while provided for them while they were in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And so let's just put our minds on that because we want to read it. We just don't want to paraphrase it. Deuteronomy 8, 2 through 5. Eight and, eight and five. Eight, two through five. And thou shalt remember all the ways of the Lord thy God, which led thee 40 years in the wilderness. I want to stop right there. So when we're in transition to salvation, we have to remember all the ways that God has led us through our, our life in this earth, man. We can't forget all the ways that he's led us. Now, hold on, there's a purpose to it. Now, notice this. It says this. Notice this. 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee and to know what was in our heart, whether that would keep his commandments or not. So look at all the ways that he has led us. And so now you know that all those things you went through that were bad and were failures wasn't failures. What they were was a system God designed to prove to see if you would keep his commandments so he can glorify you. We thought it was hard. God, why am I going through this? See, we're going to get to this murmuring. And you're going to learn, why do I need to murmur? Why do I need to go through this? Because he's got a process going on to try to see if he can do what? Prove us. You improve in time. You improve in time. And then it says to humble thee. God wants to humble thee. Because he don't deal with nobody but what? A contrite spirit and a humble heart. Remember, Satan had to lose his position because he got beside himself. But if he glorify you and you're not humble, then he's got the same situation again. He can't have it. But he's putting you through something to humble you. You didn't know if you was going to stay home and work. You cried. You worried and everything. But God wanted to see if you was going to wait on him to do what? Deliver that to you so you can learn to do what? Depend on him. Come on, think about it. When you won't have no food, your bills need to be paid and everything like that. You want to take it upon yourself to try to figure out a way. But sometimes he's trying to see if you're going to do what? Wait on him. If you blabbing out of your mouth that, look, I'm, I'm doing this and I'm obeying you. And you said you were going to take care of me. Well, then let's see if you're going to really wait for him to take care of you. But we murmur. We'll get to that later. And then it said, to humble thee and to suffer thee to hunger, and I fed thee with manna, which thou knowest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he may make thee know that man doeth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doeth man live. God is trying to put you in a position to where you would depend on every word that proceeded out of his mouth. 
because you're going to be working for him. And don't no boss want an employee that's, 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 that's not uh, submissive to what he says, that's not going to do what he wants him to do. But in the process, what's so surprisingly, even in him causing us to hunger until we rated on him to feed us, our raiment waxed not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell to 40 years. So none of us has a condition that's so bad to where we can't get up and say, thank you, Lord, that we can't get up and go another day, that we can't get up and read our Bibles, that we can't get up and pray, that we can't get up and try to overcome. There's nothing that none of us is going through and we still can't be in the process of trying to overcome. So think about it. Israel, he was only given spoon feeding them with manna and everything like that to test them. But at the same time, they still was able to walk around and survive in this wilderness. Come on. God has us in this. He said, I'm, I pray for them. John 17. I don't want y'all to take them out of the world, mm -hmm. but I pray that y'all keep them from the evil one. What did he, what did Moses tell the children of Israel? Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Don't worry about these heathens. But what did they do? They went and looked to the left and worried about the heathens and messed themselves up. So the Messiah prayed that, look, I want you to keep them away from evil, but I want you to allow them to exist in the world. Because why? I'm using this for two purposes. They're going to be my witnesses, but they're also going to what? Overcome. It's about overcoming. So why he got us going through this process, the mumbling word sometimes can come up. Now. It says the same one tells us in Matthew 6. Let's go to Matthew 6, 28 through 33. Because remember, we just seen that they foot didn't swell. They were still taken care of. I mean, they couldn't go to the refrigerator whenever they wanted to. You know what I'm saying? But they had food. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we can't go to the refrigerator whenever we want to and just eat whatever we want to eat. But guess what? We got food. We got sustenance. Sometimes we can't go out and just go on vacation every weekend and travel every weekend. But God gives us the ability maybe once a year to get out of town and enjoy ourselves. Come on, man. Because you got a purpose in this life. And this purpose in his life is he wants to humble you so he can give you what? Glorification. Matthew chapter 6, verse 28. It says, and why take ye thought for your raiment? Mm. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, it says, shall he not much more clothe you, yeah. O ye yeah. of little faith. Amen. You're trusting too little. Amen. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall ye eat, or what shall we drink, or with all shall we be clothed? For uh, after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Why? Because they didn't know God. Yeah. But your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But what I want you to do is seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Mm -hmm. So God is telling us that, that you're in the process. Don't worry about it. I'm just giving you a little bit by a little bit by a little bit because what I want to do is get you into glorification. Now, this is goes totally against the prosperity message. Because the prosperity message gets you in a situation where all you're thinking about is, is money, 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 money. Well, how can God humble you if you're constantly thinking about money, 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 money? It says that Provision still can be made through your father, 1 John 3 and 22. And you know I'm setting this up because I set myself up when I was writing this lesson. It says, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments yes. and do those things which are pleasing in his sight. And so God knows what we need and he knows that we're in the process of trying to receive what glorification. So we have to depend on him. Now, verse five, we're back in first Corinthians chapter 10. But with many of them, God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. They were overthrown in the wilderness. They failed to enter into rest because they didn't believe enough to obey. That's the whole chapter of Hebrews four. God destroyed them where their dead bodies were left in the wilderness. They failed to think like a child 
when it came to the approach that we need to have to follow God. God wants our mind. They said that, that it's, it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. It's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. That's what they say, right? That's what they say. They say it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. And Jesus said, let's go to Matthew 18 and 3. And so I'm using this and I'm using uh, uh, the story that Paul is using, the history of Israel, to show us something. Matthew 18 and 3. Matthew 18 and 3. What does it say? Uh, 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 what does it say, Brother Duro? So we always wonder, why did he say this? Why did he say this? Because when you go to numbers and you read, everybody from 19 year old and down went into the promised land, but the rest of them were killed off because they had stubborn ways and they wouldn't humble themselves to do what? Listen to God. They had their way of thinking and they wouldn't change. But they had an action that I saw in myself that I don't want to be identified with. Let's go to, uh, uh, I want to read this in Numbers 14, 33 through 35. Numbers 14, 33. It says, your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of the days in which he searched out the land, even 40 days, each day for a year shall you bear the iniquities and even 40 years and ye shall know my breach of promise. And uh, I, 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 the Lord, have said, I will surely do it until all this evil generation that are gathered together against me in this wilderness, in, in this wilderness, they shall be consumed and there they shall die. And here it is, the first glance at the word. And the men which Moses sent to search out the land who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up a slander. Up, uh, uh, upon the land, even those men that bring did bring up an evil report into the land, died by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephuna were, which were the of these men that went to search out the land. Still, now let's go to uh, 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 the follow it up in Numbers 32, 12, 10 through twelve. Numbers chapter thirty two. Numbers chapter thirty two. And uh, 10 and 12, 10 through 12. And the Lord's anger was kindled mm -hmm. the same time. And he swears, saying, surely none of the men that came up out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land which I swear unto Abraham, Isaac, and unto Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me, except Caleb, the son of uh, uh, Caleb, the son of uh, uh, Jephunneh, the Kenzite, and Joshua, the son of Nun. For they have wholly followed the Lord. And then uh, so so think about that statement that they wholly followed the Lord. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, wholly following the Lord means that you don't murmur. You don't murmur that you don't murmur. Why are you in your situation? Why are you in your wilderness that you don't what murmur? Now, uh, um, Israel had the nerve to try and attempt. To reverse God's order by refu refusing to obey God uh, 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 ten times, and and and, and I want to look into this now. I wrote this in my notes for a, a purpose. Now they had disobeyed God ten times, and they were stubborn. They was murmuring and everything, but they tried to reverse God's decision on them by saying, "Okay, I'm gonna do right. I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna do right now." But really, that's what. Remember, Jesus said. That you, 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 in your heart, you speak one thing, and out of your mouth, you speak another thing. I'm gonna show you another thing because that's what a murmurer do. A murmurer is just 
they also have the, the, the characteristics of, okay, God, I don't want no more punishment. I'm not going to do it no more. But their hearts be far from wholly following God. So Numbers 14, 39 through 42. Numbers 14, let's go there. In verse 39, Moses told these saying to all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. And they rose up early in the morning and got them up to the top of the mountain to say, Lo, we be here and we will go up into the place which the Lord has promised, for we have seen. And Moses says, Wherefore now do ye transgress the commandments of the Lord? But it shall not prosper. Go not up, for the Lord is not among you that ye be not smitten before your enemies. And so in that situation, what they did is they tried to reverse God's decision on them. And God knew that their heart was not really with him. Because all they were going to do is do what? Go back to disobeying God. And then when he put them in a situation to test them to see if they would keep his commandments, they start murmuring. Now, notice what it says in the same chapter in verse 22. Verse 22. It says, because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and they have uh, they have tempted me now ten times and have not hearkened to my voice. So they saw his miracles. They saw that he's God. They saw his wonderful things. Sometimes in our life, God done delivered us in the past several times. But then we get in another situation and what do we do? We start murmuring. And then when things don't go our way, when he decides to close his ear off and everything to us, or he decides to make us wait, then we want to, oh God, okay, I'll do what you say, I'll do what you say, I'll do what you say, but God knows that our heart is really not in him. Remember, he tries the ruins of the heart. His spirit connects with our spirit. He already knows what you got internally. But what happens, we're so used to dealing with another human that's why God said, I'm a man that I what? I ain't going to lie. Because he know man, they'll come to another man and they'll put a front on. But when it comes to God, you can't put a front on because he knows where your heart truly is. Now let's get back into uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6. It says, now these things were our examples to the intent. We should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And the word example was translated from the Greek word tupos, which means type, a figure, or an image, a pattern, a model, a prefiguring, something or somebody. Israel's experience was our type not to follow in their way of life and not to follow them. Now, this verse listed lusting after evil things, which we seem to jump over. We're, we're so quick and sure to use their experience of lusting after idols and other things. But is that the only thing that was the issue? Because it says that what? That it says, when you go back to the verse in verse six, it says, we should not lust after evil things. Also, is there, they lusted. And so things is a plural word. And now, now, now I'm getting somewhere in this. The children of Israel doing what we have, uh, the children of Israel, doing what should have been a short journey in proving themselves to God. All they had to do is obey, but they did not obey. Again, God was using this system to prove them. So let's go to Exodus 20 and 20. And I'm telling you, I'm setting us up so good. and Y'all don't even know it, but it's, it's going to be good when we get to the point that I want to make. And this point was for me and my wife, Sister Campbell. Uh, Exodus 20 and 20, it says, and Moses said unto the people, fear not, for God is come to prove you. And that his fear may be before your face that ye sin not. Deuteronomy 13 and 3, Deuteronomy 13 and 3. Deuteronomy 13 and 3. It says, thou shalt not hearken unto the words of the prophet, that prophet or dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. So he kept evilness around them and didn't get it away from them. Why? Because he wanted to see if they knew the difference, if they'd be able to believe God and not believe what somebody else is saying. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Now, why am I saying this is sometimes we're put in situations where we got God's truth right here and we got the uh, uh, an inverse truth over here or something that's not true mm -hmm. over here. And God is trying to see, are we going to listen to his words or are we going to go along with what somebody else is saying? He's trying to push us out of that system where we depend on men or we wrapped up in what men say, but we go fully by what the word of God say. Because sometimes in life, what people really do is they fear men and God. They want an association with people other than God. So the Bible will say one thing, but instead of them following what the Bible say, they're so scared to lose a relationship with someone that they'll go along with what the person is saying. But in the Bible, he says that man shall not live by bread alone, but not some words, but every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. But in our day and our time, we find so many people who wants to be associated with certain environments. So they are going along with falsehood, knowing that one day they're going to be called to the carpet for the decisions they made. Every man shall give an account for what he say or what he does, his deeds. But people are scared to stand up. But what's right? Yeah. But you see what happened to all the men. These things was written for our learning. You see what happened to all the men that had the ability to stand up. Joshua stood up. Caleb stood up. Come on now. You remember what he did when a woman had the idol and they went and got her and they they did they you know they they did what the Lord said. They they actually stopped her from living. But God took notice of that because they had the ability to stand up and do what God. Now, I'm not telling nobody to go do that. But in our day and time, we forgive. We forgive and everything. But I'm just using those examples that that that, that, that. I, I want to read something. This is not part of the lesson, but I want you all to take a look at something in Hebrews. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. This has nothing to do with the lesson, but this is good. Now, let's go to verse 35. Let's get there real quick so we can get back in our lesson. It says, women receive their dead raised to life again. Hold on first. And I'm not going to read it. But when you read verse 31, it talks about things that men did and God blessed them and they subdued kings and they were victorious in making the decision. But then when you get in 35 down, it starts talking about things not going right for people doing the will of God. Look at the comparison. Verse 31 says, by faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies. So she did something good and got rewarded right away. And then it said, what shall I say more of the time will fail me to tell you of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith to do kings, rock righteousness, obtain promise. Look, look at what it says. Obtain promises, stop the mouth of lions, crit balance of uh, fire, escape the sword, out of weakness were made strong, wax balance in the fight, turn the flight to the armies and aliens. Okay, that's all. And women had they uh they uh they had rese raised to life again. Okay, that's victorious uh things of people that had a connection with God. But what about people that didn't get a good return, but they still kept the faith? It says and others were tortured. Why? Because they stood up, not accepting deliverance. Their deliverance was, I won't torture you if you go along with what the environment is saying. You still can be part of me. You can still be my friend. You can still be one of the ones that's with us. What else did it say? That they may obtain a better resurrection. So you mean to tell me that if I stand there, don't murmur, get smacked in the face, get ostracized, get pushed aside because I don't go along with something that's not of the Bible? That you push me aside? Why? Because I'm looking for a better resurrection. That just tells me that I'm looking at things spiritually, not physically. Because sometimes when you look at spirit, uh, physically, you don't want to be disassociated. So you want to stay associated with something. And so you feel like that I'm still connected with this, so I'm going to do what says. So that's the deliverance you took. But guess what? I'm not going to take that deliverance. I'm going to go with the word of God. But these groups of people, they didn't get a triumphant right away. What happened? They got tortured. They got, they had to do, and let's read some more. This is very, very good. It says, and, um, and others had trial and cruel market and scourging. Yea, moreover, of bonds and of imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawed asunder. They were tempted. They were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheep skin and, and goat skin. That means they pushed them aside. They were isolated. 
being destitute, afflicted, tortured, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves and earth. But guess what the Bible says? All of these did what? These all have what? Obtained a good report. <laughs> so a lot of times when things are not going right, when you stand up for God, don't murmur because look, what you're doing is you holding out for what? A better re reward, a better deliverance. Sometimes there are certain people to get a good deliverance. Right away, they are rewarded. God takes care of them. But maybe it's something to you he just want to use. Maybe he want to use you in scripture that you didn't give up, that you didn't lose faith because good things and bad things are going to happen to you. But at the end of the day, you got to look into God. And that is your, your your conversation is heaven. Your citizenship is in heaven and God sees all. And so you got to read these scriptures when you're going through situations like that, because what did it say? All these did what? Obtain a good report. So just because St. Brenda had a good outcome and God rewarded her for making a stand and just because I got slapped around, that's okay because in God's eyes, we both what? Had a good report. We got a good report. <laughs> we got a good report. So both of them was written in the Hall of Fame, the ones that didn't get delivered and the ones that were delivered. Hallelujah. And so this is good. Let's get back in our lesson. <laughs> <laughs> this is good this is good and so we see that the children of Israel doing what should have been a short journey and proving to God that they can obey him uh, ended up being problematic situations all died but two adults and 19 year old now children a young nation and this is profound before, because God took kids to defeat enemies. We don't look at that. And it was kids that went into the land of Canaan to doing uh, uh, Amalekites who were really, really tall people. He took children. See, we missed that. He took children, 19 years old and down, that didn't even know how to war. And he even told them when he got in there, I got to teach y'all how to war. So he took kids. That's how powerful our God is. He took kids to subdue nations. Now, if you're a bully nation and you're walking around all bully fired and some kids come up and shut you down, boy, you got to recognize it. They got a powerful God. Come on now. You got to recognize it. That's the God we serve. Then he took little kids like Benjamin. They was little bitty babies and kids. No mother around. No father. The only adults they had was Joshua and Caleb. Wow. Now, what if somebody told you, Brother Daryl, go out there and get some kids to go fight some men? You're going to be like, hold on, God. Don't you see these, these kids? They still playing with talking trucks. You know what I'm saying? They playing with talking trucks. They still playing with video games. How science is and science gonna beat some grown men up, but that's how God is, and that's how wonderful it is. But we forget it, but we don't see these things because why we read over it. Satan don't want you to see that because that's how you see how powerful your God is that he can take kids to subdue the land of Canaan. Imagine how many of y'all would go and move to the middle of uh, 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 the middle of Bangladesh or something with a bunch of kids and get all those people out of there and take that land. You can't do it. But with God, God sent them to a land that was full of giants and he took kids to subdue them. That's what kind of God you have. Come on now. This is good. This is good. This is good. Even our times in the wilderness is just for a moment according to 2 Corinthians. Because they were only in the, they were supposed to be in the wilderness, what? A short period of time. But it prolonged their days because of disobedience. And now when you look at your life in this wilderness, it ain't nothing but a short time. How do we know that? Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we're going to concentrate on uh, uh, 16 through 18. It says, for which cause we faint not, 
But though our outward, outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light afflictions, which is all but right. for a moment. So this wilderness y'all are going through is not nothing but a moment. Sometimes you got to compare it with eternity because that's what you're living for. Yeah. Here it is, the, the life that's once appointed to man, and then you got eternity right here. What we going through ain't nothing but a moment. Sometimes when we fast, we get into this mode, oh, man, I wish this fast was over. But it ain't nothing but a second. Yeah. A fast is nothing but a second. Yeah. It's nothing but a second, but the rewards are so yeah. fruitful when you can turn down your plate and, 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 and give God some time. Yeah. You know, come on now. It says work is for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight and glory. Notice that a weight is something that's solid that keeps you, you know, that keeps you solid down. It's, 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 come on, it says that it's an eternal weight of glory. It's, it's only just for a moment. And it says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. So it tells you that their little journey in the wilderness was temporal. Our life in this, it was temporal. Mm -hmm. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Come on. We trying to compare mm -hmm. temporary existing to eternal existing. Mm -hmm. We're murmuring for a short space of time when God is trying to give us eternity. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to give us eternity and we crying about what goes on in a moment. Oh, man, they mm -hmm. did this to me. Oh, they did that to me. Oh, I got to go through this. It's only for a moment when you compare with eternity. But when your affections is not set on above, but set on this earth, you think this is all it is to get. And if you don't get it now, I'll never get it. Come on now. We can't get trapped in this temporal existence, but must constantly work towards the eternal. Colossians 3 and 2. Colossians 3 and 2. Yes, sir. Colossians 3 and 2. Set your affections on things above, not on things that's earth. That is what you're supposed to be doing. And then 1 John 2, 17. 1 John 2, 17. First John 2, 17. And the world passes away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. You're already going to abide forever. The children of Israel was going to have a land. There was, just think about it. If somebody told you, stay in this desert for three, four, five, or one week, and I'm going to put you in a land of Canaan where it's just the richest soil you can ever dream of, why can't you suffer it out in the wilderness for a couple? That just shows you. Our minds are so messed up that we are so impatient that we can't even wait for a few days because we don't believe. They had no faith. All they saw was desert. Sometimes all you see is things not working out for you. There's been a time in my life where all I saw was things not working out. I'm praying it's not working out. I'm praying it's not working out. I'm praying it's not working out. I don't heard people's testimony and they said that it worked out for me. But why not work out for me? It's not working out. But I forgot to go. Satan had me so blind that I forgot to go to Hebrews 11 and see that some people it worked out. But there was others that it didn't work out, but they still got a good report. I forgot to look at Joseph that even in jail, God is still good. Even in captivity, God is still good. Even when you lied on, God is what? Still good. God is still good. So, our problem is that we're not in sojourner mode. We're not in sojourner mode. 1 Peter 1, 17. First Peter one and seventeen. First Peter one and seventeen. It says, "If ye call on the Father," and, and I'm looking for First Peter one and seventeen. If ye call on the Father, who without respect of person judges according to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning, 
here in fear. We're in sojourner mode. Mm. And what is a sojourner? He knows that this is not his permanent existence. See, the children of Israel got in the wilderness and felt like this is our existence. This is where God got us living. And they couldn't see that this is temporal. Sometimes your situation is just a temporal situation, but because you done tricked your mind and thinking it's permanent, you can't proceed into what God has for you. We have to get in sojourner mode. Hebrews 11, 8 through 9. That's why, that's why Abraham and all them guys was able to get along when they was moving from place to place. Now notice this. Everywhere Abraham went, God made sure he left that place with substance. So that was God taking care of him. So everywhere he went, God took care of him, and he never had a permanent existence. He was always moving from one place to another. And what God promised him, he never received because he died not receiving what? The promise. So he never received the permanent location, but he will. But God said, look, he obtained a good report. I know I promised you the land of Canaan, and you never stepped one shoe face into owning it, but that's all right. You still going to own it. Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11, 8 and 9. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should receive after for an inheritance. Notice that. He should have received it for an inheritance. Mm -hmm. Obeyed and he went out not knowing whether he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country. Dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him in the same promise, for he looked for a city which had foundations whose builder, builder and maker is God. So he never felt like that was his permanent place anyway. See, that's where the children of Israel's minds should have been, because their daddy had that concept. But somehow when they went to Egypt, they lost it. Sometimes when you're in tribulation, you lose that God's promises are his promises. Sometimes when you're in a hard bondage, you forget God's promises. Come on now. So he was journeying in this temporary existence. Israel lusted after evil things in their temporal existence. They were in a temporary place until they got ready to go in the land of Canaan. That's just like if you have a house built and you stand in a, in a, a temporary dwelling and you get comfortable in that temporary dwelling and don't want to move. Come on now. Now, I took a job and my wife said, you're not going to stay there. And so I had an interview and I felt real negative about it because my flesh got used to getting back to work in that, in that job. But that's a temporary dwelling. I can't get comfortable right there. But I got comfortable right there. And when I got comfortable going to work every day, my mind forgot about a promise that God said that he would get give you back what the canker worm stole from you. Come on now. Come on now. And the canker worm come because you done done something to displease God anyway. But when you obey and ask, say, God, look, you know, and he gets you back, he can restore. Come on now. This is the word of God. That in a temporary, how in a temporary dwelling are you going to get start lusting after evil things? God is trying to get you ready for glorification, and you get caught up in the vomit that you done upchucked. They upchucked Egypt. He walked them out of Egypt on dry shot, and you done upchucked it. But then you get in a temporary dwelling, and what happens? Satan throws stuff on you, and you get caught up in it. Come on now. We're in a temporary dwelling. And, and see, that's when Satan usually comes. When God got you out in the wilderness to humble you, he said, look at these people. Look at what they got. Y'all living in tents. We living in the wilderness. Come on now. In a temporary dwelling, you may be having a hard situation in life. He'll show you somebody. Look at them. They ain't even going to church on the Sabbath. They traveling, going on vacation. They got new cars and everything like that. Look at you. But you forget, my shoes ain't wore out yet. You forget to say, my shoes ain't wore out yet. Come on, I still ate. You know what I'm saying? You may have a better car, but I still drove down the street. I still had air conditioning. You know what I'm saying? I still ate food. I still got them clothes. But Satan shows you somebody else and it's appealing to the eye. 
and you get caught up in it and you start lusting after evil things. Well, I might as well not even do the Sabbath because that's where the murmuring come in. The murmuring come in because Satan is going to send you a mirage while you're in your temporary dwelling. And then that's when you're going to start murmuring against God. Because don't that happen in the desert? That's, the mirage happens when you're in the desert. When you're in the desert, a mirage happens. A picture happens. And then you see that picture and you think it's real and you go towards that picture. And by the time you get there, you find out it is worth nothing. It's vanity. It's emptiness. Now, verse 7. Neither be ye adulterers, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose to play. This refers to the impatient character they had and not waiting on God nor his servants, but their impotent and impatient hearts burned to feed the hunger that they had to return to what was tangible to them. What was tangible to them? Egypt and a permanent dwelling that they had. And they didn't even realize y'all wasn't in Egypt for a uh, permanent. I only sent Joseph down there to do what? To set y'all up so I can deliver y'all. Come on now. A system they had grown to believe in, which was wickedness. Come on. What about us and our impatient hearts? Are we like our forefathers? Or do we have patience? Second Thessalonians 3 and 5. Do we have patience? Do we have patience? Second Thessalonians 3 and verse 5. It says, the Lord Direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. Now, why did I use that? The children of Israel were supposed to have patience going through the wilderness and humble themselves so they can go in the land of Canaan. They didn't have no faith because with faith goes patience. Because if you look at the what the fruits of the spirit. It's what patience, long suffering. And you got to have faith to believe in order to be set up with the fruits of spirit. So here it is. You see the patient waiting for Christ. So we're in the same situation. We're in the wilderness waiting on Christ's return. Mm -hmm. But Satan is showing us all kind of oh, delicious God. things. But do we have the power to what? To uh, suffer the afflictions with the people of God to the enjoy, then the joy sin for a season. Romans 8, 22 through 25. Romans 8 and 22. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And so these humans don't realize that they're in pain. Y'all think they're enjoying their life, but y'all don't see them in their secret closet. Yeah, they get out and flies with a Rolls Royce and a new suit and everything like that. And they show pictures like everything is okay. But y'all don't see them in their secret closet. Yes, sir. Y'all don't see and hear the eternal internal problems that they have in their families. It says the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain until now. Mm. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit. Even we ourselves groan yeah. within ourselves waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Mm. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doeth he yet hope for it? But if we hope for that which we see not, then do we with patience notice that wait for it. So if you got hope, you both better have some patience along with it. And so we all are all hoping, wanting to see the deliverer as the children of Israel got impatient and waiting to deal with their God. Moses went up for a moment. Think about it. Our Savior left and went up. So you see how it is, Moses, when he got him there, he just only went up for a little bit to get the commandments. But they didn't even have patience enough to wait for him. They said, look, where's this God of ours? He ain't came. He ain't here. He got us in the desert. He got us in his temporary dwelling. This be the God that we serve. This is the feast of the Lord. Because remember, Moses told Pharaoh, I want to take him to the wilderness so we can have a feast. Well, they made their own feast. This is the feast we having. We're going to go back to the gods of Egypt. What happens to us? We get impatient. God ain't coming. Jesus ain't coming. 
They'll tell you Jesus ain't coming. Jay been saying that since I've been a little boy. They even had it on the church van that, you know, to get saved because Jesus is coming. He ain't came yet. Man, y'all wasting time. Y'all better live y'all life, man. Y'all wasting time. But we can't let it happen. Because just as Moses went up and they got impatient, we can't get impatient because our Savior said, the angel said in like manner, what's going to happen? The same Jesus who you see shall come in like manner. He told the apostles that. They did. They died in the A.D. times. 70 A.D., 50 A.D., it's 2022. When is he coming back? But we got to go to scriptures, count the long suffering of God. as an opportunity for what? Individuals to get their life together. God is not slack concerning his promise, as some men, you know, say he's slacking. But in the meanwhile, we can lose hope and turn to what the bondage world provides for us when we are trapped in it as far as worship again. But in the meanwhile, we can't lose hope and turn to what the bondage world provides us when we were trapped in it as far as worship because we was worshiping Satan. And we was worshiping everything to it. Israel had got mixed up with what the Egyptians was doing. And then what did they do? They got impatient in the wilderness and made a golden calf and said, this be the God of Israel. Now notice, everybody that came out of Egypt wasn't Israel. Sometimes everybody that's in this wilderness is not of God. Because Satan do what? He manifests himself as an angel of light and so is his ministers. They're planted in. And they're going to offer you an idol God. They're going to say, look, this be the God. Serve this God. But you got to have patience and say, you do what you want to do. Things may look dire right now for me. I may look stagnated. And I, I, I like it because these people put messages out. Look, I only hang with people that's motivated, that's doing this and doing it. Y'all think y'all living a life? This is temporary. I'm going to keep my mind on God. Oh, we leaving y'all behind. We don't want to talk. We don't talk to people that don't live, that ain't motivated. We in a crew with people. We trying to live our life the best way we do. You go ahead and live your life because these same people going to be knocking on your door when it's time for you to get glorified. You just got to believe it's going to happen. But you can't be mean to them. You're going to have to say, I, I knew all the time that you just didn't have the right mind, but that's okay. Because that's what they do. They'll make you feel bad and say, look, we don't want to deal with you. Y'all stuck in that uh, stuff. We live in our life and everything like that. That's all right. God is still with us. Like I said last week, you know, every time that it seemed like that I was down on my luck, uh, down what they call a uh, 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 counted out, God raised me back up. Mm-hmm. Verse uh, 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 eight, neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day, three and 20,000. Neither let us tempt God as some of them, tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of the serpent. Yes, we can tempt the Messiah who is the head of the church in returning to pure vomit. Second Peter 2 and 22, let's go there. Second Peter 2 and 22. It says, but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned into his own vomit again and the soul that was washed into her wallowing in her mirth. We cannot return from what we've been washed up after. You see the children of Israel, they was taken to a type of the washing in the Red Sea. And when they went over, what did they do? As soon as Moses didn't come back like they wanted him to, they was impatient and they returned back to the vomit, to the idol gods that soon. They wasn't so soon. And then remember what Paul said? Are you so soon removed from what I done taught you? That's what happens. You get so soon removed because you get impatient with God. Now, here we go. This is the focus of it. We took all this to get. Verse 10. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured that was destroyed of the destroyer. So the only that wasn't the only evil things they was doing. The other thing that they was doing was evil was murmuring. Now, what is this murmuring? What is this murmuring? The English word murmur was transliterated from the Greek word guguzu or guzuzo, guguzo, and connects to the word like mutter, grumble, with muff, uh, a muffled undertone to show a slow igniting discontent 
as if you were making a low discontent sound. And then, you know how you ignite a fire, it starts small, then grows into bigger things, mm -hmm. saying things that is called under your breath. And, and you know what they said, meaning the breath is heard louder than the words. Have we ever been like that where our breath is heard louder than our words? And so sometimes you got to ask people, are you talking louder than your breath? What are you talking about? That means you murmuring. You know what I'm saying? When you go to talk, when I can hear you breathe louder than your speech, but you saying something, you murmuring. That's when you see people. You hear them breathing, but you hear their mouth moving, but they talking. They don't want you to know what they saying. Come on now. Come on now. Conferring together with someone secretly to complain. That's what the children of Israel did. Now let's let the Bible define it. Exodus 15, 22 through 24. Because this is what I was doing. Exodus 15 and 22. It says, are y'all there? I hope I wrote it. Hold on. And I'm not, I'm in Exodus 15. And, and Exodus 15 and 22. It says, so Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea and they went out into the wilderness and uh, uh, wilderness of Shur. And they went three days into the wilderness and found no water. And they came to Mamre. It said they could not drink of the water, uh, 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 Marie, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Marai, excuse me, Mera. And the people murmured against Moses saying, what shall we drink? So immediately after he delivered him, they seen his miraculous works for all the plagues he destroyed. He got them out of Egypt, just like he said. They went out with substance and everything, and they were so soon removed from Egypt, are you so soon removed? And then you get out there and things get a little tight and you can't remember, hold on, if he opened up the Red Sea, he can give us water. Let me just pray to God that he give us water. You forget to do that and you start doing what? Murmuring. From you start murmuring. Come on now. Glenda, you wanted your degree and God gets you your degree. And then the next thing you know, you have another situation that don't work out. And instead of you praying to God, you get the stomping around your apartment. My word. Yeah. You don't got a degree with no student loans. Come on now. He done gave you a degree with no student loans and you murmuring. Have you not forgot what God done Man. done to you yesterday? Oh, yeah. Come on now. He done got you out of Cincinnati State where you was laying on the ground crying 24-7 and just because little people talking about you, you go to murmuring and carrying on. So here it is. God do a miraculous thing for you. Then something small come along and you screaming on the small stuff, but on the big stuff you're just sitting there waiting for God to open the door for you. Ain't that like crazy? You believe he can remove a mountain, but when it comes to a pebble, you sit up there murmuring, oh God. Oh God, there's a pebble I'm about to fall on it. Come on now. You know you can't move the mountain. You know the mountain is way to God. Please move my mountain. We can sing that all day. God, move my mountain and give me the strength. Don't move my mountain. We even saying, give me the strength to climb. But then when a little pebble comes, oh God, a pebble is in the way. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do, Lord? A pebble. A pebble is in the way. Oh Lord. Here it is, the children of Israel. He done moved mountains for them. And then they get it a little pebble. And they go to murmur. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. This is after the great escape of hard whips. Now Moses and the people sung a song. Now this is this is another thing. Let me get you on this one. Right. Moses and the people 
was singing a praise song to God. We'd be in church. Oh, God, you're so great. We'd be shouting all over it. And then after we sing the song, as soon as a little trial happened, we murmuring. Let me show you what they did. Exodus 14. Exodus 14. Now, we just read that he delivered them. Now, previous to this complaint in the wilderness, they had just sung a song to Moses. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, let's go and see this. Exodus 14. No, no, Exodus 15. Exodus 15. It says, then saying Moses, not only Moses and the children of Israel, this song unto the Lord, and Speck saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he is triumphant, glorious. The horse and his rider has what? He thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song. And he is become my salvation. He is my great God, and I will prepare him a habitation my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. And they go to singing. Have you heard the, the, the old mother in church? Lord has done this for me. The Lord has done this for me. And then she get out of church and come in a problem. Oh, Lord, why did you take me this way? And everything like that. Come on, that's how we get. <laughs> we sing in one minute about God, and the next minute we cursing him. Man. James 3 and 10. Yep. Yep. James 3 and 10. Yep. James 3 and 10. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessings and curses. Come on now. My brother, these things ought not so to be. The children of Israel was blessing God's name, and the next minute they cursing them. You done brought us out here. Do we do that? After we get out of church on Saturday, we singing and carrying on. The Lord is good. We don't even get to the song. We wake up in the morning complaining. After Right after our prayer, God, thank you for waking me up in the morning. Did you know so-and-so did this to me? Why God making me go through this stuff? With murmur. Exodus 16, 1 and 3. Exodus 16, 1 and 3. And they took their journey from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came into the wilderness of Sin, which is before Elam and Sinai. And on the 15th day of the second month, and after departing out of the land of Egypt, and the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said to this, would to God we have died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and when we did eat the bread of the poor, and he have brought us forth into the wilderness to kill a whole assembly with hunger. Now listen to those words. They're saying that we had died by the hand of the Lord in Egypt so they knew why they were in Egypt. And it, it was by the hand of the Lord not to die, but to be delivered. But then they said, and we sat in flesh pots. And we ate bread to the full. It came with whips. Mm -hmm. Then we understand that not only that, he said that I brought you in here to feed you with hors d'oeuvres mm -hmm. and small portions mm -hmm. to test you. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And they're complaining to God that has just delivered them. They sung a song. So how can we get in church, sing songs, and glorify God to the fullest, and then as soon as a little problem happens in our life, what are we doing? We're complaining. Hey. 7 through 12. 7 through 12. And in the morning, then he shall say the glory. Now notice what it says. And in the morning, then he shall see, verse 7, she see the glory of God for that he heareth your murmuring against the Lord. And what are we that we ye murmur against us? It says, and Moses says, this shall be when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat and in the morning bread to the full for that the Lord heareth your murmuring, which ye murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmuring are not against us, but it's against the Lord. Sometimes when we go through situations and we go to murmuring, uh, 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 we go to murmuring against God when things don't happen to us. 
Maybe I'll call and say, don't worry, DeWanda, it's going to be okay. And you start, don't tell me, I don't want to hear that. And you, you, well, you, you, I'm only telling you what God told you, and it's going to be okay. Why do I got to go through this? You ain't listening to me. You taking up for them. I'm not taking up for nobody. I'm just telling you this is how God wants you to respond. This is how God wants you to respond. Well, I don't care. You are you. I'm not for nobody but God. That's who I'm for. And for what the Bible say. Oh, just think about what, what, it, what we're you, this. And so why would God use energy to deliver and cause the deliverer to die and want? Notice that statement. Listen, everybody. Why would God use energy to deliver the children of Israel and call the delivered, cause the delivered, who was Israel, to die for one? So why would I rescue you, Marcus, from sin, but then cause you to die and suffer trying to serve me? Why would I do that? Think about it, St. Regina. Why would Christ say you bought with a price of his body, but then take you out in the situation and not feed you and not take care of you? He's not going to do that, but your trust will do it. Your trust, your lack of faith, and your lack of trust will do it. Your lack of faith and your lack of trust is going to do it. Israel's lack of faith and lack of trust put them in a situation where they couldn't be humbled to be rewarded. Mm -hmm. Exodus 17 and 3. Exodus 17 and 3. It says that, and the people thirsted for water, and the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us, and the children of Israel and our, uh, and the ch and our children and our cattle with thirst? And all they had to do is say, Moses, could you ask God, could he give us some water? The water issue again. It was their issues, not God. Remember Hebrews 8 and 8 said, find and fault with them. When you read that scripture, it's not talking about only they failed to keep the covenant, but they always had the fault because they wouldn't have no faith. Their lack of faith caused them to murmur instead of have patience. So they came again, another water issue. And instead of saying, Moses, could you ask God, could he give us some water? He found an issue with them that they had lack of faith. And when you don't have faith, you don't have patience. When you don't have faith, you can't see. Faith is the hub substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You can't see in tomorrow spiritually when you don't have faith. Numbers chapter 14. Let's read something in Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 2. Let's start it there. It says, and all the children of Israel. It Notice what it says. When we first read, it says, all our fathers was carried through that cloud. But not only did all the fathers carry through that cloud, they all murmured. It says, look, it says in verse 2, and all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole, con not some, the whole congregation said unto them, wow, with God that, he, we would die in the land of Egypt, or would God, we had died in the wilderness. No faith. Yeah, what? In the same chapter, verse 27. Verse 27. How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I've heard the murmuring of the children of Israel which murmur against me. Verse 29. Your carcasses shall fall in the wilderness, and all that were and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from 20 years old and upward, which he have murmured against me. Come on. 36, verse 36. And the men which Moses sent to search out the land, who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up a slander upon the land. So sometimes you can have one person come and bring you some craziness in your journey. But you got to be strong enough not to murmur when they bring you that information. Mm -hmm. I have to be strong enough. When somebody brings me something, I got to say, it's in God's hand. I can't worry about it. 
And if you read number 17, it's a whole thing about it. But let's go to Deuteronomy 1 and 27. Deuteronomy 1 and 27. Deuteronomy 1 and 27. And ye murmured in your tents and said, because the Lord hate us, he has brought us forth out in the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us. So sometimes when you got oppression coming near you, you saying, God don't like me no more. Sometimes when you face up and say, God really must not like me. Well, that's murmuring against God. You don't, you can't, you can't tell God how he is. God don't like him. I must be cursed. Come on. We'll even say, I'm cursed. I'm cursed. What are you saying to God? You don't know God. The English word murmur in the Old Testament was transliterated from the Hebrew word regan and connects to the word like whisperer, criticize, backbite, slander, and complain. Israel was in a temporary dwelling but could not see past that temporary dwelling because their hearts wasn't right before God. They did not uh, uh, They did not want God's truth. They didn't want the truth of God. So when they couldn't see a way being made, yet not even waiting for a way to be made, they complained about the condition. And that's sometimes we do that. God moves on his own time. He sees and he knows. But sometimes there is a proven condition that we must meet. Sometimes there's a proven condition that we must meet. You know, now we read in the New Testament to use their experience and learn not to complain about the wilderness we face, but wait on God. And so we have to do that. And so let's go to uh, Philippians 2 and 14. Philippians 2 and 14. Philippians 2 and 14. What does it say, uh, Brother Earl? You got it? So we're, we're commissioned to do all things without murmuring and disputing because he dealt with that with the children of Israel. He dealt with that. Jude, it's only one chapter, verse 16. It says, these are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust. And their mouth speaking great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. And so think about that. The ungodly is the, the identified as murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust. Wasn't that the children of Israel? Who in their mouths are speaking great swelling words. And notice what else it says. Having man's persons, not God, but having man's persons in admiration because they want a position or they want a, a relationship or they want association. But one day, all this murmuring is going to stop. Isaiah 29 and 42. Isaiah 29 and 42. Isaiah 29 and 24, excuse me. 29 and 24. It says, they also that err in the spirit shall come to understanding, and they that murmur shall learn doctrine. So eventually, all this murmuring is going to stop. But for us, who have the first fruits of the spirit, we have to put uh, ourselves in that position. Now, the last verse in uh, 2 Corinthians that we was reading said, now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they were written for our uh, uh, admonition upon who the ends of the world has come. So God doesn't want us doing that. And so when I put this lesson together, it was really God showing me that now it's time to graduate. To stop complaining about Whatever you face in this temporary dwelling, it's all it's all a situation to humble you and to perfect you and to finish a good work in you to get you to where I want you to be so you can be fit for the master's table. Dang. And so we have to remember that that I share that with you and I share that with Sister Campbell. That's why I wouldn't tell her the title. You can ask my yeah. son. She asked me what was I teaching about and I would not tell her at all. And uh, and we were going to name we were going to name the title of it. Is your breath louder than your speech? And the reason yeah. we was gonna say that because that means that you're a mur murmurer. And uh, I just wanted to encourage her as well as me that no matter what trials we face, we got to put it in God's hands, and we can't murmur, we can't complain.
because God has something good. You can't say in one breath, God got something good for us. We're waiting on it. Maybe it ain't came because you're still in the wilderness murmuring. And so we got to get out this murmuring stage, but we got to accept that we're in a transition to receive glorification. So may God bless you and keep you. And thank you for listening. Amen.